Hi, welcome to another video. I have chopped off my hair, but it's not very clean, so I'll show it off another time. But I'm here today to give you a couple of videos. It's the first of May, which means it's haul and wrap up filming time. Um, and since this is Sunday, I thought I'd better do it before we're halfway through the month and I haven't done it. So um, today we're going to be talking about the books that I acquired, purchased, I purchased all of them, in the month of April. Um, and we'll just have a go through that and then there will be another video coming up soon that is my wrap up. So if you're interested in that, keep your beady eyes out for it. It will be on its way soon because I'll be filming it today also. But um, let's jump into this. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things I acquired in the month of April, which is pretty low for me. To be fair, I had some other things that I um, have on pre-order that just haven't arrived yet. Um, which will be rolling into May. So, yeah, let's get started. First up, we have uh, The Strange Worlds Travel Agency, the third book, which is The Secrets of the Storm Forest. This is a cute middle grade featuring this travel agency where they have all these um, suitcases on the wall. And if you step into a suitcase, it transports you to a magical world. Um, currently, the bookstore is being run by... Um, is his name Julian? Jonathan, um, who is a trans guy um, running his family store, but he's a little bit lost because his family disappeared and he's trying to run it all on his own. And it's just very sweet. Um, and Flick is our main character um, who's going on these adventures with him. Um, and she's the actual child. He's like a late teen and she's like 12, like middle grade. Um, and they're going on these little adventures together and I loved book one and two um, and I'm very excited to read this one. I'm pretty sure this is the third one. Yes. Um, and they're just so cute. I could keep reading these kind of stories forever. They're magical, whimsical, adventurous, fun. Loved it. The second one was like piratey. Um, I'm, this one obviously is set in a forest. The storm forest, kind of tropical. Um, so I'm excited to see what this plot wise is like. Like I think this could be fun. Next up, I picked up The Untamed Shore by Sylvia Moreno Garcia, um, which was one of the only Sylvia Moreno Garcias I didn't have a physical copy of. Um, so I ordered it, um, picked it up. This is. Oh, it's just weirdly cut. I was like, what's going on up here? No, it's not actually anything interesting in particular on the pages. It's just been bias cut a bit wrong. But um, this features a shark, I believe. Um, a bunch of dead sharks pull up in California, in Baja California, and um, the main character is getting caught in some kind of legal um, issue. It's a psychological noir, um, and I've literally enjoyed pretty much everything I've read from Sylvia Moreno Garcia, so I'm excited to read this one as well. She has a new one coming out soon too, um, so I'm going to have to try and read this soon so I can get my hands on the new one. But yeah, I think I've read... Oh, except some of her fantasy stuff. I've read pretty much everything else from her. Um, so, yeah. I'm excited to read this. I hope I love it. And I'm excited to then pick up the new one too. I also picked up the new Emily XR pan, which is called An Arrow to the Moon. I believe this one is a fantasy, whereas her first one was a contemporary. But it was so... Oh, magical realism fabulism vibes um the first one was so her first book was so sad and heartbreaking and just really like cut to the core um and this one is a reinterpretation of romeo and juliet featuring romance magic and chinese mythology and i believe it is like kind of contemporary fantasy i'm honestly not 100 percent sure what is 1974 1991 all right so yeah it's kind of like modern fantasy romance. Romeo and Juliet retelling. I don't know, it looks... I really liked her first book, so I was going to pick up this one. No matter what, pretty much. <laughs> A little book I picked up. I say little, it's literally not even 250 pages. Um, this is Dead Collections by Isaac Fellman. This is a sapphic, I believe, adult maybe fabulous it's been blurbed by charlie jane anders which gives you an idea of what's going on um so there's an archivist and a widow of a moderately famous television writer oh maybe it's not sapphic oh no soul's a guy okay maybe i misread that originally and he's a vampire 
Um, it's a Fully in Love Vampire. You can tell I haven't read this in ages. <laughs> I've read them back before and I was like, that's so cool. Um, but I haven't read it in a while. Um, so it's like librarians, gay. I it's It's definitely queer, but I can't remember the exact details of that. And... It's kind of got some mixed media elements, like it's got some film inserts and things and emails and stuff. It's short. I'm hoping to read it super soon. I've heard really good things about it, so <laughs> I'm excited. The um, LGBTQ plus read subscription service pick that I got this month is This Rebel Heart um, by Catherine Luck. Uh, basically in this service, if you haven't heard me talk about it before, um, it's run through Patreon and you pay monthly for Dahlia Adler, the author, but also blogger. She does a lot of promo work for Queer Reads, um, and she runs a Queer Reads blog. Um, and she basically just like helps you handpick and then sends you out a book each month. Um, so it's not just like, here's the pick of the month. She like handpicks things for you. Like will consult with you about what she thinks you might like that's coming up in queer fiction. Um, this one is, I believe, based in Jewish history. It's fantasy. Yeah, it's, um, it says, Scylla knows the Duna River is magic. During World War II, it kept her family safe when they needed it most, safe from the Holocaust. But that was before the communists seized power in Hungary, before her parents were murdered by the secret police. And I assume it's sapphic because uh, it's queer of some description, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm just really excited. I was eyeing this off already and literally that's got so many cool look inserts, um, diary things, little, look at these little bits, a little journal bits. I don't know. I'm so excited about this. I've read from Catherine Locke before in collections and really enjoyed them. And I see them on Twitter a lot. I'm excited. <laughs> Historical-esque, magic, Jewish folklore, very excited. I also picked up Fevered Star by Rebecca Ronhorst, which is the sequel to, what's it called? This this was not the day to film this video because my brain is not working. What is the first book called? Black Sun. Um, this cover, I hated it when it got announced. I actually like it all right in person. It's got just enough gilding <laughs> that it's all right. I hated when it got announced, but I don't actually mind it in person. Um, so this is the sequel to Black Sun, and I really, really enjoyed Black Sun. It was a little bit above me. Like, at times I was like, I don't know if I get this, but overall I ended up really loving it, um, and I'm excited to see where this goes. It's based on uh, indigenous mythologies in Middle and South America, I believe, um, and Rebecca Ronhoss is an indigenous um, black indigenous author of America um, and I have pretty much loved everything I've read from her I need to continue the Trial of Lightning series Sixth World, I haven't read book 2 but I've read book 1 and really enjoyed it, I enjoyed her middle grade um, enjoyed Black Sun so I'm very very excited to pick this up and then we're going to end with two books that I'm going to try and read in May um, first up we have this little collection from Brandon Sanderson and Jancy Patterson, which is the Skyward Flight collection. It's a series, the series of novellas that, um, take place around the third Skyward book. Um, so the first two are before it and the third one is after it. I've read the first two already and I'm planning in May to read, Sky uh, Cytonic, the third book of the actual series and then the third novella, which is like chunky. <laughs> like they're big. It's a like 280 page novella. It's not little. Um... But yeah, I'm hoping to finish this off. I'm glad to have a little bind up that matches my cover of the covers of the rest of the series. Um, I have them somewhere back in this black and white section, but I don't know exactly where. Oh no, actually I moved them because I now have like a little Brandon Sanderson section tucked away. I'm gonna be attempting to read this in May, but uh, if you watch my wrap up, you'll see reading has not been going great in April and I'm not sure how it will continue in May. So we'll see if I actually get to that. Um, and the other one I'm hoping to get to in May is Portrait of a Thief by Ghosty Lee. And this is a heist novel um, featuring Chinese cast? Or it might be a mixed Asian cast. Oh no, Chinese Americans. And they're in college and they're stealing a bunch of colonialist looted pieces. Um, and I, I'm so excited. Everyone I know has raved about this. 
it looks like it's like my perfect book, short chapters, heists, all the things I love. I've heard it's like gonna make me feel things uh, and I'm very, very excited about it. And literally I like, I could pick it up tomorrow except that I have things I have to read. Um, and so I'm trying to like resist cause this is so up my alley. Anyway, these are all the books that I acquired in the month of April. Um, thank you for watching this video. Hope you liked it. Hope you're interested in these. Um, and if you've read any of them or you're interested in any of them, I'd love to chat about it. Obviously, I haven't read any of these yet, but I'm excited about them. So keep it spoiler free, please. Um, and I will see you soon in my next video, which will be my wrap up. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.